name's Jasper Marcellus, AKA Slossom Malone One. I first started getting into music through DJing. And my father's a jazz musician, so I had a familial relationship with music. Um, but it wasn't until I um, bought my first sampler, which was a um, SP404, that was like my first time I started to really have a personal relationship with making music. I'd also been studying fine art. I went to the Cooper Union. Um, so I've always been trying to find ways to intersect you know, the world of music and the world of art. I think a lot of the paintings that I do are kind of acts of remembering various parts of a performance, like the closeness of a person or the taste of a room or the stickiness of a floor, the lights. And then the performances kind of look back on the paintings, like how we arrange ourselves in the space. But also, you know, a painting is most, most times, you know, it's a rectangle and a stage in most scenarios is a rectangle. So they kind of are constantly completing each other. You know? I'm also always thinking about performance art, thinking about the body and, you know, an audience also being made aware of their own body also. Excelsior is my second album. It loosely follows the story of a person who finds the sword that doesn't stop growing in their possession. And then the album ends with the sword becoming so long that it splits the earth in half. It was like bootleg Excalibur, you know, that's how I was thinking about it. Excelsior means ever upward. Um, it's also the, on all the license plates in New York. Um, so it's pretty much what it's about. <laughs> bring me dreams, bring me dreams. I think I kind of let the song tell me what it wants to do. You know, I think about the first song, The Weather, which was started it was a complete mistake with it. I made a tape loop and I just had some sound playing out of my computer and then that was just what the tape loop got on the... That's what I just would have recorded. And then I started to think about what is weather, like what is the process of weathering, like how could that also translate to different techniques. Um, and I think I got really into FFT forms of like delay and distortion because it's like reminded me of clouds and stretching and spectral noise like expanding and then also like underneath the song there's this envelope of noise opening and closing which I was thinking is kind of like waves in the most literal sense you know the medium is the message massage so I think all of those textures also mean what the album means you know I don't think they're it's not like you're gonna hear the lyrics and be like, oh yeah, I get it. No, you know. I think it's more a feeling. To fly ball, I think a really great example would be on a Hear a New World. Hear a new world. I wanted that song to feel repulsive. But in the same way, a lollipop can become very repulsive after, like the after it's just sitting in your mouth, and sugar can kind of become like corrosive. So there's a super saw, which is like one of the most saturated, overwhelming sounds. harpsichord, which is this kind of, it's now become like a, a, a sound of horror almost. And even how the strings are voiced, there's a line in there that I was thinking about, Psycho. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's just these instruments that have, that carry a sort of yeah, societal, cultural meaning. Yeah, and then putting them together is my favorite part. Um, I also think about something Brian Wilson talked a lot about when they were recording Pet Sounds, 
which was like creating a new instrument by combining two instruments that shouldn't necessarily be together. I am always thinking about like untrusting of um, self-sufficiency as a mode of art making uh, or like the idea of a masterpiece or something that can be fully self-sustaining. I like leaky things, you know, things that are kind of maybe oozing out on one side uh, or leak into something else or the feeling of general incompleteness because um, I think then it will hopefully inspire someone to keep searching, you know, rather than feeling like they've arrived at the end, you know. Also, I just feel like a theme is never really finished. Even though you might finish a song, there's probably elements in there that you might want to reconsider. So. I think any creative endeavor is you're accumulating sounds, it could be even like information, ideas, but then it's kind of what you erase and take out and what's left behind is kind of, I think, how I approach a lot of um, things that I end up feeling okay with presenting to people. Erasure can be really liberating feeling because it's you're, you're not holding it to be so precious. If you can break it, then that probably means you could put it back together. I actually quite like that feeling of being like, like <laughs> I think boredom is kind of what I'm most fixated on right now. I think music is, or sound is time, or the perception of sound is time, so I think it's a really boring form of art because you, it requires people to sit and experience time. To my dismay, I think a lot of my music is hyper fixated on keeping people on the edge of their seat or like pushing them to a new realm that they weren't expecting to be put in. Um, but I find myself gravitating more towards this state of nothingness or boredom. I, I think about going to hardcore shows and those moments in between songs when there's just feedback playing. I don't know, I just always love that moment. Like right before the song ends or right after um, the song. Wait, no, right before. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, that, that middle space. I really wanted that sound on my computer, so. <laughs> you can hear it at the end of New Joy. There's this like thing that sounds like a square wave kind of like um, ascending. And that's uh, just the J. Mackey. <laughs> Understanding concepts from from its like most granular scale, I think, is really important to me because I'm always asking why, um, like how, I guess, and that's what actually got me into Max because I wanted to know why and how. Because I think using a computer is a bit abstract as like a tool for creating anything really, because the GUI kind of hides what's happening. I think working with Max is similar to maybe using like a guitar or something, because it's like you hit the string and then it makes the sound. Or it's like Max, you code the thing and then it does the thing, you know what I mean? I had a sound art teacher, Zach Poff, and he built a machine to scan 16 millimeter film. And I just was like, how, do you, how did you do that? Like, how, what? And he's like, it's Max. And then I downloaded Max. And then I started making, like following the tutorials, but it just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and it wasn't until years later 
when I started performing as a solo act, uh, I just wanted to add a temp tap tempo feature to the Ableton Echo. And I was like, why is there no tap? Why can't I do this in Ableton without shifting the whole transport? So then, yeah, I just started getting really fixated on trying to figure out this very seemingly simple problem. And then after that, I just kept finding new problems that I was like, I want to do this. How do I do this? You start to realize how many arbitrary restrictions there are in computer programming. Sometimes it can feel weirdly political even. Like, why does someone want? Why did someone make it that way? Like, why can't it be this way? You just do whatever you want. Almost. You do almost whatever you want. Um, and that's really exciting. I'd say probably like 70% of the live set is uses Mac's devices to either get things to move a certain way, like mechanically, or effects. There's a lot of stuff I found from the community, like program changes for my, for my foot pedal, like found that on maxforlive.com. Uh, and that's a really important part of the live set, just getting the messages to get sent back and forth. Um, and there's like other effects that I've built, like a freezer, FFT freezer, fuzz, reverb. But a lot of stuff that I haven't released publicly, I use on the, um, on the record. There's a lot of instruments that I haven't released yet because they kind of explode sometimes. There's this one that's like a string uh, instrument that uses uh, polyphonic expression. But I was like learning how to use MC. I didn't really quite understand it, so there are these weird glitches that would happen. Uh, that ended up sounding really cool. <laughs> there's an Odyssey clone that I used quite a lot on the record. And then there's like a J, J on, Jean, as I call it, uh, which is like a on uh, clone. Yeah, different waveforms, you know, octave. And you have a uh, sine. Square, parasite, noise, filter. Yeah. Really, it was just trying to copy Johnny Greenwood. That was really all it was, I think. I read some interview. Well, I watched the Phantom Thread, and then I was like, well, and then I was remembering There Will Be Blood, and I was remembering some of the scoring work, and then there's this one sound that like keeps re reoccurring, and then I, then I heard about, then he said something about Threnody, Pendereki piece. The sound of it is just crazy. I don't know, it's just an intense sound. There were a lot of parts on Excelsior where I knew I wanted the sound of this kind of fretless, almost theremin-like instrument. It was just out of obsession and necessity that I started working on this Max device. Like, I can't afford to buy an old, so. That's why I wanted to make one. And same thing with like all the resonators, like the palm. Like, I don't even know where to get a palm. You know, it's not even like I can't even afford one. It's like, where do you even get one? <laughs> a lot of these more elusive sound palettes are behind paywalls. So then I'm like also like, well, if someone wants to just try it out for free, they should be able to just have it. So. I use Gen a lot because of the single sample feedback option. Like that is just allows you to do so much. I got that book, whatever the Go book, um, and that just yeah. But I, asked, I think I was talking to Tom Hall, and he was like saying there's really no difference in terms of efficiency between using like the native. Max objects and then the gen objects. And I did feel, I had to like check myself maybe on some weird elitism, like trying to do everything in gen. So I'm starting to use the other objects more now. I was like thinking to myself at like an earlier stage of my Max exploration, I feel like how important it is to the ecosystem of having it be somewhat accessible. 
sharing is caring, you know, that mentality. The learning is really like a communal based learning, even the discord or the, the, the chat or the, um, the forums, um, YouTube, um, and it's all free, which is crazy. That is my favorite part. I mean, Max is not free, but um, the knowledge is free, which is super sick. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I think there's like such an ego thing about like wanting to figure something out, but there are people out here that have probably tried to solve similar questions as you. Um, and I think that's what makes all of it stronger. Um, so, yeah, ask questions. <laughs> yeah.